us today is still a relatively small firm of 15 lawyers, economists, and paralegal staff, but has become one of the most prestigious law firms in southern Spain. We specialize in most areas of the law, but specifically urban, civil, and banking law. And now, we are looking to use this specific know-how to the real estate and property market. We are now looking to broaden our client base to the investor and the end buyer by helping them make real estate investment decisions with the same tools and information we use and we offer a corporate client, but with a very simple and knowledgeable approach. Due diligence on urban status, technical reports, and tax situation for the type of investment at hand of our conveyancing is part of a conveyancing. It's a must. We include it in all, we include it in all our instruction for fees. We pass on to you this information on a day-to-day -day basis. We keep you informed as we do the client, of course, and we do it in the client's own language. If the client speaks Spanish, naturally, English, French, or Russian. Всем доброе утро. Спасибо, что присоединились сегодня к нам. На темой данного семинара является актуальная информация по налогообложению, налоговой резиденции и также мы рассмотрим вопросы о наследовании после правовых реформ 2015 года. Позвольте сделать краткое введение о нашем адвокатском бюро. Наше адвокатское бюро было основано в 1973 году нашим уважаемым директором Игнасио Перес де Варгас. И в основном мы занимаемся, специализируемся в градостроительном праве, гражданском праве и банковском праве, применяя весь полученный опыт и знания в сопровождении сделок купли-продажи. Ранее мы предоставляли данную услугу по сопровождению сделок купли-продажи как дополнительную услугу нашим клиентам. Но сейчас мы создали новый департамент, специализирующийся именно на предоставлении услуг по сопровождению сделки купли-продажи. Наш принцип всегда находиться в постоянном контакте с клиентами и всегда быть доступными для клиентов и агентов. И также, пользуясь случаем, я бы хотела поблагодарить всех тех, кто нам уже доверил решение юридических вопросов своих клиентов. Надеемся на будущее сотрудничество и на профессиональный рост благодаря вашим рекомендациям. To be able to look into a complete analysis of the uh, tax uh, situation is necessary to go to the double imposition treaty that Spain may have with the country of origin of the investor or buyer. It may happen that the non-resident private individual has to pay the state taxes in Spain and according to his national law has to pay similar or the same taxes in his country. That is, we have a case of a double imposition. When a tax resident in the United Kingdom has paid income tax in Spain, the United Kingdom will permit this taxpayer a deduction on his British tax for the same amount already paying in Spain. This is equally uh, applicable to Russian nationals. There is also the possibility of a non-resident that wants uh, to, uh, to invest in Spain to practice an activity. The possibility remains open to do so through a non-resident company that will be acting in Spain through a permanent establishment or through a Spanish company. Non-regular resident. Who is that non-regular resident? Well, it, it, this, this, uh, this new modification in the law has been created for those uh, people displaced uh, because of their job. This individual uh, shall be considered resident in Spain, for, uh, uh, according to the law, but he will have the right to choose if uh, it's better to, to, choose, uh, to pay the income tax, Spanish income tax, or the non-resident tax, which is you know, quite profitable considering that uh, the, the, the rates for non-residents in when, when, uh, uh, when uh, high incomes are received. This individual has not to be considered a uh, resident in Spain for the previous 10 years to the displacement. So it, it must be a brand new situation for him coming to Spain for the first time for, uh, because of the displacement. This displacement must, has to, must be uh, produced because of a labor agreement or uh, work conditions or, uh, well, accepting uh, a, a sport man, a sport woman, uh, which, are, which has a, a different regulation, or because this uh, individual has become the administrator of a company. But in this company, he, has no, ha, he mustn't have 
any shares at all or not having uh, relevant uh, shares or not owing relevant uh, number of shares of such a company. But this individual will have to pay wealth tax in Spain for every wealth he may have not only in Spain, but all over the world. So it's quite important to be in consideration because it's this, art, this, this new regulation has been created for people who usually receive a quite high amount in incomes and, and has a really uh, important uh, issues regarding the taxation. At this point, we must ask ourselves which legislation is applicable to non-residents well, before the judgment of the Court of Justice of the European Union, the rule was quite easy. Non-residents uh, always had to pay according to a state law, I mean, according to the most burdensome. If any of the parties involved, either the deceased or the heir, were non-residents, then a state legislation uh, was always applicable. Therefore, under the same conditions, a non-resident always had to pay more inheritance tax than a resident. The Court of Justice considered that uh, our internal legislation went against two of the most important principles of the uh, European Union single market. I'm talking about freedom of establishment and free movement of capitals. So according to the judgment, Spain had to amend its internal law to comply with the European Union law. So I think that you already know the next question. Has Spain complied with the judgment? We think that partially, because Spain has corrected the situation with respect to European residents but not with respect to non-European residents. Thank you very much, and I hope in the next seminary um, I have good news for non-European residents too. Thank you.